something is happening in our world. The masses of people are rising up, and wherever they are assembled today, whether they are in Johannesburg, South Africa, Nairobi, Kenya, Accra, Ghana, New York City, Atlanta, Georgia, Jackson, Mississippi, or Memphis, Tennessee, the cry is always the same. We want to be free. Welcome, and thank you for being here. Good morning, Beverly. It's a glorious morning today as we remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and message. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we could not have our usual MLK Day breakfast, but that won't stop us from remembering. As we celebrate Dr. King today, let this be a day of service to others. Let this be a day of working towards accomplishing his dream and reflecting upon what each and every one of us can do to make justice and equality our reality. Dr. King said, human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals Beverly, let us be dedicated and committed to continuing to do the hard work. I'm here today with love in my heart and truth on my mind. I ask you to ask yourself today, what can I do to help my community be a place brimming with peace, justice, and righteousness? Thank you again. Have a great day. and I'm in the fourth grade at Hannah. My name is Delphine Ama and I'm the color black. Say hi to me, I'll say it right back. If we don't look like each other on this Wampanoag land, can we work together hand in hand on the southern border of the USA? Some families are being broken today. Speak up, speak loud. We will tell this to the crowd. If we work together, something amazing could happen. This is why I'm really rapping. If it starts out tough, we can figure out what to do. Work with me, I'll work with you. Good morning and welcome to our celebration of Martin Luther King. One of the joys I have as the Beverly Superintendent of Schools is getting to know our students. From our pre-K to our high school learners, your enthusiasm for life has been and continues to be an energy source for me. Similarly, Dr. King's enthusiasm to make our society a better place for all people drives my service to each of you. I appreciate this chance to speak with you on this special day, the birthday of a man who contributed so much to our way of life. Today, I'm thinking about the justice seekers, the community builders, and the freedom riders, and all those who struggled and risked their lives to shape our history and make today possible for us. We are because of them. We should reflect each day. Today, let's think about and commit ourselves to living out the values of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. No matter your age, you can live out courage, truth, justice, compassion, dignity, and service. These are the very values we strive daily to stand up in every school and in each of our classrooms. We are living in unprecedented times and we are challenged by the state of our nation. But the actions we exhibit in our everyday lives is strong. Another world is possible. That's why it's important for our school district to work hard every day so that each student has the capability to use their minds, unique talents and visions for a better future. Dr. King had many messages, but the one that resonates with me today is that all things are possible to every student watching. You matter. I am pleased now to introduce to you my colleague, Dr. Andre Morgan, 
who serves Beverly Public Schools as the Director of Opportunity, Access, and Equity. Thank you, Dr. Chirochek, and hello to each of you. I, too, am honored to be a part of this celebration, commemorating the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I appreciate the legacy of Dr. King because, one, he was a man of faith, and two, he spoke truth to power regardless of who was in the White House. In fact, he had the audacity to tell then-President Lyndon Baines Johnson that more needed to be done for black people and other people of color. Can you imagine how many people disliked him because he spoke up for what was right. But President Johnson listened to Dr. King and the result was the 1964 Civil Rights Act, the 1965 Voting Rights Act, and the Housing Discrimination Act, all policies that helped people whose skin was darker. But when Lyndon Johnson increased soldiers in Vietnam, Martin Luther King spoke out because injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. President Johnson stood against the war in Vietnam. And while King was speaking out for those injustices, there were preachers just like him who stayed silent. Ministers who told their congregation on Sunday mornings to speak out against injustice, speak out against the things that were not fair and just simply wrong. But ministers who also sat back and did nothing while people were getting harmed in our society. So when Dr. King was arrested and sitting in a jail in Birmingham, he wrote a letter to the preachers in the city about their lack of principles. And they called him an agitator and they stood against him. Yet Dr. King continued to do what was right. And when I think about Dr. King's impacts on our society, I think about thermometers and thermostats. And that was Dr. King's message. Be a thermostat and not a thermometer. I know there are many age ranges that are watching this, so bear with me for just a moment while I explain to our younger viewers what thermometers and thermostats are. A thermometer measures the temperature of a solid, liquid, or gas. That's it. A thermostat, on the other hand, detects the temperature in a room and controls the heating and cooling systems. So when you go into a space and it's too cold, you can use the thermostat to make the space warmer. So a thermostat can make changes. Dr. King was suggesting that for each of us, we should all strive to be thermostats and not thermometers. Because when you are a thermostat, you can change the environment. You can change a system. But when you operate as a thermometer, you don't change anything. You just say what is going on. Today and each day thereafter, Let's all commit to being thermostats to help change the wrongs in the world around us so that we all become better tomorrow than we are today. As I consider my role with Beverly Public Schools, it aligns with this thermostat and thermometer analogy. My role is to be a thermostat. And when I see something wrong as it relates to the education of all of our students, I can't just sit around and ignore it. But rather, I have to say and do something about it until it changes. And do you know why that matters? When students, whether they are in elementary, middle, or high school, don't get what they need to learn, then our entire society misses out on the potential of entire generations whose minds, unique talents, and visions for a better future are never realized. As Dr. King so famously said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Make today a joyous celebration. When I think about Martin Luther King Jr., I think about the dream that he had. And I also think about every other person that has helped us to accomplish a little bit of that dream. But there's just so much more we need to accomplish. I really like this book called All the Things Were For. It reminds me that everybody can make a change, even us kids. Some things that I am for is friendship, helping others, nobody should feel left out, and that every human has equal and fair rights. Thank you, Dr. King, 
and every other person that has helped us to accomplish a little bit of that dream. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke about being equal and having rights. Some people don't agree, but what he said means a lot to our community. And he showed everyone the way that you can respectfully treat others equally. What Martin Luther King said was, "Time, the time is always right to do what's right. Bye. My name's January Gill O'Neill, and I'm thrilled to be with you today for this virtual MLK celebration. My deepest gratitude to all of the organizers and shout out to the students and the community members who have participated. I'm going to read four poems. This first one is my Beverly poem. Technically, they're all my Beverly poems, but this one for sure is. It's called Where I'm From. I am from north of Boston, standing at the lip of the Atlantic on land belonging to the Nomkeg, which means fishing place. I am from Misery Islands, great and little, born out of Earth's dark dream song, the low tide creasing the cracked coastline. I am from Poets Hill, Pride's Crossing, Fish Flake Hill, Gloucester Crossing, Goat Hill, Montserrat, Ryleside, and the Cove. I commute with the gulls and the plover that inhabit lands once home to tanneries, mills, merchants, seamstresses, domestics, and the enslaved. I am from a history we've built together. I am its industry. There is no more perfect union than the archive of birches and maples that preserve our distractions and our rhapsody. Perhaps I belong to this place more than it belongs to me. The left coast on my side, tumble of sea glass, waves of red algae under the song of sky. In between grit, there is more grit, the tough leather of a place rediscovering itself. I am what the water whispers. For those of you who have been on Brimble Ave and seen turkeys walking around, that really could be anywhere in Beverly. This is definitely a Beverly poem. How to Love. After stepping into the world again, there is that question of how to love, how to bundle yourself against a frosted morning, the crunch of icy grass underfoot, the scrape of cold wipers along a windshield and convert time into distance. What song to sing down an empty road as you begin your morning commute? And is there enough in you to see really see the three wild turkeys crossing the street with their featherless heads and stilt-like legs in search of a morning meal. Nothing to do but hunker down, wait for them to safely cross. As they amble away, you wonder if they want to be startled back into this world. Maybe you do too, waiting for all this to give way to love itself, to look into the eyes of another and feel something. The pleasure of a new lover in an unbroken night, your wings folded around him on the other side of this ragged January as if a long sleep has ended. This is a poem for my son. Hoodie. 
A gray hoodie will not protect my son from rain, from the New England cold. I see the partial eclipse of his face as his head sinks into the half dark and shades his eyes. Even in our quiet suburb with its unlocked doors, I fear for his safety. The darkest child on our street in the empire of blocks. Sometimes I do not know who he is anymore, traveling the back roads between boy and man. He strides a deep stride, pounds a basketball into wet pavement. Will he take his shot? Or is he waiting for the open mouth orange rim to take a chance on him? I sing his name to the night, ask for safe passage from this borrowed body into the next and wonder who could mistake him for anything but good. And I will close with this poem since we've been uh, quarantining and isolating over the past 10 months or so. Um, I can't help but stare out into the sky at night and wonder. So this poem is called Dark Matter. Under a great oak, I gaze up at the night sky to marvel at ghost distortions I cannot see. Whatever cosmic strings hold the universe ripple in the fabric moving around me and through me, cocooning the galaxy, keeping me fixed upon this earth. I breathe in ash or dust and call it solitude, self-preservation, a test of faith, a trick of light, some ancient blueprint playing itself out. I need a new theory of gravity that explains how to claim the world and not fracture it, an algorithm to decipher this complicated time of together alone. Evenings like this bring with it a quiet that can't be named. My qualms exhaled as crystals into the icy air, the fine mist of an unknowable story floating towards grace. Thank you. My name is Josh Millen, and I'm the president for Beverly High School Student Council. And a few of our members would like to share some quotes from Dr. King. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Hello, my name is James, and part of what we do here at BHS is to make sure Martin Luther King Jr.'s message of equality and opportunity is embedded within our school. We hope that everyone has a healthy new year and a reflective MLK day. Everyone can be great because everybody can serve. And here at the Saints Academy, we have many opportunities to serve. In my opinion, I think the quote, everyone can be great because everyone can serve, means many different things. And I think it's unique to your situation. You can pick up trash, you can lend a hand, you can help others in need, but we can all do something to change the world. And I think Martin Luther King is trying to show us a message of resilience 
and unity our community can have if we all work together. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream means to me that everybody should be treated equally and be judged by their character, not by the color of their skin. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Our lives and the day we become silent about things that matter. I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. I choose love because hate is too big a burden to bear. One day, little black girls and little black boys will be able to join hands with little white girls and little black white boys as sisters and brothers. Yep, I have a dream today. I had a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the turn true meanings of its. Creed. Creed that people are created equally. Thank you. And who are you? I'm Alan Bloombrook. Goodbye. One of my favorite quotes from Martin Luther King is, In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the signs of our friends. Time is always right to do what is right. To me, Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream means fighting with your words, not your fists. And this is the sign that says, the time is always right to do what is right, and it was wrote by Martin Luther King. And that feels like justice to me. I am Martin Luther King Jr. I stand for peace, I stand for justice, I stand to help others. I stand as proof that no matter how hard the struggle, we must fight for what is right and work to change what is wrong. Whatever struggle you face, no matter how hard it gets, you must always move forward. I am proof of this. If we rise up, if we stand together, if we remain united, nothing can stop our dream. Good afternoon. My name is Abu Toppin. I am the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Director for the City of Beverly. I'm here with Mayor Mike Cahill, and we're here to express and give uh, gratitude for Dr. Martin Luther King on his birthday celebration. When I think about the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, there are numerous actions, events, and words that have left etched in our culture, but there's one particular quote that stands out in my mind today. We will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. I think this speaks to the state we're in today in this country. Now more than ever, it is not just a collective voice of people of color coming together, but we need our friends and allies to say we will no longer accept, tolerate, look away, or ignore the injustice. The country continues to be, there continues to be a direct assault on equity and justice in this country. The assault has taken on many new forms from when Dr. King was protesting during the Civil Rights Movement. But rest assured, the threat is alive and well. I believe that Dr. King understood it takes a village. It's not just the responsibility of the few, but the many. Since the unnecessary passing of George Floyd, it has been our friends and allies who have not been silent. They have stood with people of color to say we can no longer accept, tolerate, look away or ignore this injustice. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Dr. King knew this collective voice is what will make a difference in affecting real change in this country. It was that collective voice during the civil rights movement that helped push the needle forward towards change. The voices and images of people of all ethnic backgrounds and origins locked arms seeking justice was impossible to ignore. My hope is that this collective voice will continue to shout from the mountaintops, to check and challenge every assault on justice and fairness in this country. That collective voice is powerful and deafening and will not be ignored. Thank you, Abu. Hello, I'm honored to join together with you all 
in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s life and legacy. He was truly one of our country's greatest and most impactful Americans in all our history. I agree wholeheartedly with everything that Abu has just said. Everyone in this country and in this community has the same rights under the United States Constitution. And yet, in America, not every individual's rights have ever been or now are being safeguarded. America's promise has never been America's reality for all our residents. And our shared and individual responsibility is to dedicate ourselves to changing that in every way we can. And when I say we, I acknowledge that there are so many wonderful people in our community doing this essential work, acting as individuals and acting in groups, like our multi-faith coalition, our human rights committee, our many formal and informal groups who strive to provide help and care and resources to our neediest and in many cases, most marginalized res residents. You all help to humanize and value and serve. And to rely on Dr. King's teachings, as to our shared responsibility to move Beverly further along our journey across the arc of the moral universe toward justice, we all together are making progress. Since the tragic killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, we as a community have begun to do some of the real work that is needed. Conversations, community-wide as well as more intimate, about race and racism, and about education and policing, declaring racism a public health issue, creating a race equity task force, committing to and undertaking an equity audit, conducting several anti-racism trainings for city and school staff and elected officials, creating the new city position of diversity, equity, and inclusion director, and now having Abu Toppin on board in this capacity to help lead our efforts. We together have made a start. We are committed. So let us keep traveling this path together. This is now, and I expect permanently, a part of our city governments and our community's work. Just as we strive to hold our country to its promise, let's continue to work together to make sure our community of Beverly safeguards life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all our residents. Thank you all, and thank you, Dr. King, for your work and for the inspired and courageous life you led. Hello, I'm State Senator Joan Lovely, and I'm honored to be here with you virtually today. Each year we celebrate and remember the remarkable legacy of the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We reflect on how far we have come as a community, as a commonwealth, and as a nation. On this day especially, we dream of the community in which we all want to live and contemplate what each of us can do to realize this community. Dr. King dreamed of a beloved community. He envisioned a community for everyone where every person, regardless of race, religion, national origin, gender, or sexual orientation, can feel at home. A community where people are free of hunger, hopelessness, and poverty. This past year has been so hard for so many. We are still working to combat a global pandemic that has killed millions worldwide, left many without work, and forced people into food and housing insecurity. With all of this going on, we could easily despair about our future. But in response to the many difficulties we have faced, I think we have caught a glimpse of Dr. King's beloved community. I am grateful that I have the privilege to represent such compassionate communities that are dedicated to lifting us all. So on this annual day of reflection, I hope you will join me in making a commitment to help those in need, to fight for justice and equity, and to be an example of the beloved community we all wish to see. I know that working together, we can make the dreams of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. a reality. Hi, I'm Jerry Paracella, State Rep for Beverly. Thank you for putting together this event. These are difficult moments in our nation's history, but the words of MLK ring true today as he did when he said them. The time is always right to do what is right. Those are words that inspire me and I try to live by them every day. So thank you and have a great and wonderful MLK Day. Thank you. The time is always right to do what is right. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they are not judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. 
We may have all come on different ships, but now we are all in the same boat. The time is always right to do what is right. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. The most important thing that Martin Luther King said is his speech. If you cannot fly, then run. If you cannot run, then walk. If you cannot walk, then crawl. But by all means, keep moving. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. He wanted a better life for the black and white people. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Thank you, Martin Luther King. People were, with white skin were treating other people with black skin the way that they're not supposed to be treated. So Martin Luther King was stood up to that. My dream for my school is to make it, is for it to fly. More, my dream for my world is more peacefulness. Bye. And my um, dream is for um, nobody to die and no guns. Mm -hmm. Bye. He fought for for African Americans' right, and he was from Atlanta, Georgia. And he is important for American history. Martin Luther King had a good dream, but sadly, it did not come true. But we are at Black Lives Matter protests to help make it come true. The time is always right to do what is right. This is a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. He had a dream that we would stand united together in this land, that we would strive to find a way to live as friends in peace today. He wanted each of us to see the beauty of equality. He thought that white overcomes wrong, that hope can turn the weak and strong, and showing love instead of hate would make a country truly great. His message meant to set us free with was filled with hope for you and me. So on this day, let freedom ring as we remember Dr. King. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream to me is being kind and nice to each other forever. It is up to our generation and all future generations to make sure we are an active part of fulfilling his legacy every day. Today we're reading from Dream March by Vonda Nelson. Martin's dream wasn't his alone. It was a dream millions of Americans shared. Now his dream lived forever in the hearts and minds of people everywhere in the march for freedom goes on. We of the Beverly Multifaith Coalition are honored to be part of Beverly's tribute to Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We know how important it is to come together now more than ever. Activist and friend of Dr. King who fled Europe to escape the Nazis, Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel said that we are taught by the ancient prophets to know that morally speaking, there is no limit to the concern one must feel for the suffering of human beings, that indifference to evil is worse than evil itself, that in a free society, some are guilty, but all are responsible. So we take a moment now to center and to ground ourselves, maybe even put our hands over our hearts and feel them beating and know that no matter where we are physically, we are all connected through our hurting, broken, beating hearts. And we are all connected and strengthened by common purpose. And so let us join together in reflection. 
O my people, what have we become as a nation? And what will we become in the wake of violence and insurrection, in the face of an armed assault against our democracy? Rioting and criminality, attempted coup, domestic terror fomented by lies and fear and anger of a president. Nazis and Confederate flags, death and destruction in the Capitol. This doesn't happen in the United States, but it did, and it can again. Woe to the land that teeters on the brink of fascism. Woe to the people who stay silent. Woe to the people who think that this is freedom. Woe to the politician who cannot or will not stand against this outrage. Shame on those who have hardened their hearts, shut their eyes, closed their minds, and empowered those who attempt to banish truth, justice, and free elections from our midst. Those bolstered by hundreds of years of systemic racism, those who bring swords and guns against our sovereign land. Source and shelter. Grant safety and security to the people and democracy of the United States of America. Protect us from violence, rebellion, intimidation, and attempts to seize our government. Save us from leaders who cannot say no to attacks on our legacy and our future. Bless all those who exercise rightful authority with the will to banish hatred and bigotry and to safeguard the ideals and institutions that are the pride and glory of our country. Let truth and justice reign in our country and spread to the four corners of the earth. Let the light of true freedom shine brightly in the halls of power. And through each and every one of us, as a beacon of hope for every land and every people. And as we are reminded in the Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech when he quoted Amos 5 and 6. Let justice roll down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. And we are to uphold that as we continue to uplift our country in the Martin Luther King Day celebration on this day.